starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Marcus Hanscom. I work here in graduate admissions at the University of New Haven. I just want to thank you all so much for coming out today, taking the time to learn a little bit about the new online Master's in Criminal Justice program that we're offering here. Um, as you see on the screen, uh, you're using GoToWebinar. So on the right side, you'll be able to see uh, if you have any questions during the session. We're actually going to, everyone will be muted during the actual session. Um, but if you have any questions as we go along, feel free to ask them in the questions box that you'll see on the right-hand side. And uh, as you ask them, I'm happy to interrupt Wes or we can, we can uh, answer them directly in the questions box for you. And then also at the end of the session, we'll open up your microphones or your phone for that matter as well if you'd like to have a live discussion with us. Uh, if you have any questions about the program. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Wes Yuntz. He's our program advisor for uh, the criminal justice program. And uh, take it away, Wes. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, and welcome, everyone, to this virtual information session describing our brand new, totally online Master's of Science in Criminal Justice degree program. Uh, as Marcus mentioned, my name is Wes Yuntz. Uh, I'm a faculty member in the criminal justice department, and I'm the academic uh, program coordinator for this new degree. Um, thank you for joining us today, uh, taking time out of your schedule. Um, just to give you an overview in the presentation portion of uh, this session, I'll provide uh, first a brief overview of UNH and the Henry C. Lee College. Then I'll provide a description of the criminal justice program, our faculty, and how our educational philosophy translates into online courses and programs. Uh, then I'll provide an overview and some essential details of the totally online Masters of Science in Criminal Justice. Um, then a description of the curriculum, followed by a description of the admissions requirement and the admissions process. Provide some basic information about tuition, financial aid, and some important deadlines. And then provide a description of some common careers and employers for uh, MSCJ grads. The University of New Haven is a private, uh, top-tier comprehensive institution. Uh, we were founded in 1920 on Yale's campus and then moved to our current West Haven campus uh, in 1960. We have a rich history and a national reputation as one of the leaders in experiential education. And that's a model that emphasizes practical experience in the development and transmission of knowledge. We've been offering graduate uh, education since 1969, and we now serve nearly 1,800 graduate students on campus. We offer 30 degree programs and 25 graduate certificates. All of our programs are accredited by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, which is the major higher education accrediting body in this region. We recently received blanket authorization from NEASC to offer any of our degree programs in an online format. And the Master's of Science in Criminal Justice is the first program that we're rolling out. UNH is probably known best as the home of the Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences. The college was founded by Dr. Henry Lee, a famous forensic scientist and educator who has worked on such high-profile cases as uh, the O.J. Simpson case, the John JonBenet Ramsey case, and Vince Foster's suicide. Dr. Lee founded the college as one of the very first academic programs offering degrees in criminal justice and forensic sciences in the nation. The college now offers graduate degrees in criminal justice, including the Master of Science and a PhD, forensic science, fire science, emergency management, and national security and public safety. The college is also the home to the state-of-the-art state Henry C. Lee Institute for Forensic Sciences, which houses state-of-the-art laboratory and teaching facilities. Within the Lee College, the Department of Criminal Justice has been educating criminal justice professionals for nearly 60 years. We were one of the first departments of criminal justice in the nation, and we've worked very hard to create and maintain a worldwide reputation for excellence in graduate education. We're currently the second largest criminal justice department nationally in terms of number of faculty. We rank second regionally in the number of Masters of Science in Criminal Justice degrees conferred in 2010, and ninth nationally. We want to invite you to be part of this legacy as we bring the same quality MSCJ degree offered on campus to the exciting world of e-learning. 
in order to provide the highest quality educational experience in an online uh, master's degree that you can be proud of, you will learn from the same faculty who teach our on-campus courses. Not only do our renowned faculty hold impressive academic credentials, but more importantly, they have real-world experience in what they teach. CJ faculty possess over 300 years of combined professional experience as law enforcement officers, FBI agents, Secret Service agents, police chiefs, crime analysts, victim advocates, crime scene investigators, forensic scientists, prosecutors, defense attorneys, and forensic psychologists, to name but a few. In fact, this is all part of our overall educational philosophy in which we provide a student-centered, professional practice-based education. Now, what this means is that what you learn in the virtual classroom will be brought to life as you learn, integrating theory with real-world practical application. And this is where the experience of our faculty and students really shines through. The online courses offered through this program are designed as highly interactive learning experiences where you won't simply read dry text on a page or listen to long-winded lectures with little relevance to your world or experiences. Rather, our highly interactive courses help you to apply your knowledge both as you learn in the virtual classroom and as you learn from your instructors and peers who also possess a wealth of real-world experience through the interactive discussions and carefully developed exercises. As a note, the courses in the program are developed so that there is no set meeting times for classes. This means you can review materials and complete assignments at any time of day from any location with broadband access. But the courses are structured with deadlines and times for um, completing material, so to help you manage your workload and keep on track to complete your course assignments and requirements. We want you to know that we will be there with you and your student colleagues all along the way. The totally online Master's of Science in Criminal Justice, um, the goal for this program is quite simply to prepare you for career advancement either by changing to a more promising career track or climbing the ladder of your current career. The degree consists of 36 credits of coursework plus a zero credit no fee capstone experience. The purpose of the capstone requirement is to provide students with the opportunity to synthesize, apply, and demonstrate the knowledge they've gained while a student in the program. All courses in the program are entirely online. You'll never need to come to campus. Each class lasts seven weeks, and because of the accelerated pace and high quality of the coursework, students will typically only take one course at a time. The seven-week courses are offered during six academic terms per year. There are two terms in the fall, two terms in the spring, and two terms in the summer. Importantly, you may begin the program in any of these six terms, so you don't have to wait to start your degree program. Moreover, by taking one class in each of the six terms, you'll be able to complete your entire master's degree in only two years. One of the most exciting features of the program is that while you're completing your coursework towards the Master's of Science degree, you will also be earning credits towards two of our three graduate certificates. These additional credentials provide you with the ability to customize your studies and gain exp expertise in areas at the forefront of the field. The vast majority of students in the program will earn the CJ Management Certificate, which emphasizes the application of modern management principles and practices to the field of criminal justice, including methods for evaluating and ensuring efficient administration of criminal justice systems. Students will then have the choice of earning an additional certificate in either computer forensics investigation, uh, which enhances students' knowledge and skills in forensic computer investigation is utilized within federal, state, or local government and corporate organizations, or in the area of victim advocacy and services management, which develops advanced knowledge and skills in working as victim advocates and victim services managers. It is important to note that these certificates are designed to be earned as part of your degree, and they will not be offered to individuals who are not seeking a Master's of Science in Criminal Justice. This is a true value-added element to the program, and it does set us apart from other online CJ programs. Provide you with a little bit of detail about the uh, curriculum and the courses uh, within the program. We have, uh, I set it up into 
basically four sections. The core curriculum, which is required of all students, includes four courses. The first course covers the interface between psychology and law. Second course focuses on explanations for criminal behavior and crime rates. The second and third, or third and fourth courses focus on the methods and applications of those methods within criminal justice to understand criminal behavior, the effectiveness of criminal justice institutions and policies, and so forth. Students will also be able to select eight courses as electives. They'll be chosen from three groups defined by the certificate that they are associated with. The first group of courses that you would select from constitute the Criminal Justice Management Certificate, which will be earned by the vast majority of students in the program. The four courses in this um, certificate focus on issues of managing criminal justice organizations, evaluating resource allocation, um, and predicting crime. The second set of electives focuses on the Computer Forensic Certificate, includes four classes. The first two focus specifically on computer crime and then network security and data protection. The second two courses are um, investigation courses, basically criminal law and criminal investigation. They also set us apart from many of the other um, online criminal justice programs. Advanced investigation is a course that focuses on crime scene analysis and uh, the analysis of um, crime scene evidence and the handling of that evidence. Criminal procedure focuses on the legal aspects of criminal cases. Students can choose between courses in that set or within the Victim Advocacy and Services Certificate to complete their degree. That certificate involves two courses that are unique, the Advanced Victimology course and the Crime Victims Rights and Services course. To complete this certificate, two of the core courses are also applied. So while there are only two listed here, there are four courses that constitute that certificate as well. Hopefully we've piqued your interest in the program, and so I'd like to talk a little bit about our admissions requirements. First of all, all students interested in the program should complete an online application at our online, uh, cjonline.newhaven.edu website. We do require that you have at least a bachelor's degree with a minimum GPA of a 3.0 in that degree. We require official transcripts from all prior colleges and two letters of recommendation from either academic or professional sources. Now, if your GPA is below a 3.0, we want to encourage you to still apply to the program uh, and submit as part of your application a resume or CV and we'll provide the email address for uh, sending that. A brief personal statement, no more than 500 words, indicating your uh, interest in the program, professional experience, and other um, aspects of your life that you think would make you a good candidate for the program, your work experience, other educational experience, maybe some background. And if you've completed the GREs, you may submit GRE scores, although they are not required for admissions in the admission to the program. After all application materials are received, we will email a decision to you normally within five business days. Then we will send you a formal letter and admissions packet by postal mail. You'll see that within a week or so after. And finally, we will send you emails with details for registering for classes, buying books, accessing UNH email, and other items uh, they'll help you to prepare for that first class that you'll be taking. In terms of the tuition and financial aid information, just to give you a brief overview, the cost of attendance for the program is the same as our regular uh, graduate per credit uh, cost, $775 per credit, which amounts to uh, $2,325 for a three credit class, and all classes within the program are three credit classes. There are no fees associated with this program. Financial aid will be available for students who are eligible um, through federal direct unsubsidized student loans, federal direct graduate plus loans, and as always, private alternative loans. 
those are loans that you would obtain on your own. I do want to make clear that uh, tuition is always subject to change according to the rules set forth by the um, Board, of Regents, Board of Governors. Excuse me. Now just to give you an idea of some important dates, for the two upcoming um, academic terms, Fall 1 and Fall 2, Fall 1 classes will begin September 4th and run until October 27th, or 22nd. Excuse me. The application for that term, to begin in that term, will be due by August 21st. The Fall 2 academic term classes will run from October 26th through December 18th, and applications for that term are due by October 15th. Again, you can enroll and begin the program during any of the six academic terms that we have. And as I'm sure a lot of you are aware or at least interested, I want to give you some information about some of the common careers that our graduates have uh, found themselves eligible for and found employment within. Many of our students have worked in areas of national security, forensic computer investigation. Many work in law enforcement and corrections, probation and parole, work for the court system, and we have many students who work in victim advocacy and services. And within those broad careers, We've had graduates who have worked for the Chief State's Attorney's Office, the Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Defense within the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Families in Crisis, which is an advocacy uh, organization, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, the New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse, many state administrative agencies, U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, and finally the FBI. I want to thank you for your time and your interest in our totally online Masters of Science in Criminal Justice program. And I want to invite you to visit our webpage at cjonline.newhaven.edu if you want to find out any more, inf more information about the program, to request information about the program, or to apply online. As well, if you prefer, you can always contact our admissions team by phone, toll-free, at the number on your screen, 1-855-835-5717. Thank you again for your time and interest, and please feel free to ask any questions you may have at this time. All right, Wes, thanks so much uh, for your time and for your information about the program. Um, we do have one question I'll direct to you, and anybody that has any further questions, uh, we've gotten a larger group of attendees. Uh, on the webinar. So if you have any questions, feel free to enter them in the questions box that you see on your screen on the right. Or you can actually, you'll see there's a raise hand button. And if you'd like to use that, I'll unmute you and you can ask the question live to us uh, through your phone or using the microphone on your computer. Um, so the question that was directed to us was from Betsy Segui, I believe her name is. Um, and she was asking about, is the cost of books included uh, with the tuition cost? No, cost of books are not included with tuition. We have an arrangement with our campus bookstore, which has a fully um, online bookstore presence where you can buy all books, um, rent books, obtain e-books for courses where e-books are available. We're also working on arrangements uh, to provide electronic copies. Uh, many students on ground have opted for the rental options, and those will be available for students. Uh, they provide a reduced cost in the main uh, contingency is that you return the book to uh, the bookstore. All this can be um, accomplished ordering online and then uh, shipping through the mail and the bookstore is uh, fully prepared to do that. I think there's a nominal fee around five dollars is what we were quoted for shipping. Um, so no, the, the cost of books are not included in tuition to answer that question. Okay. Um, now Wes, there's 12 courses in the program, correct? That's right. There are 12 courses uh, constituting 36 credits. There are actually 14 that we offer, and so that's a really good question. Um, students will have the option of selecting their electives from typically either the computer forensics track or the um, victim services, services and advocacy track, those two certificates. Um, students won't take all 14. In other words, they'll take 12 of the 14. Within that 12, four will be the four core courses, and um, the other eight will be electives from the, uh, those three areas, those three certificate areas. 
Um, okay, great. Um, there was a question about the total cost of tuition, and I did the math for you. Um, the total tuition for the entire two years, so this isn't annual, this is total for the entire program, is $27,900. And as, as Wes mentioned before, that uh, there are no fees that are included, so your total cost is $27,900 plus the cost of your books um, that you could obtain either through the bookstore, as, as Wes mentioned, or you could rent them, or many students will opt to find them with other online sources, eBay, Amazon, those kinds of things. So you're welcome to get the book um, wherever it's most convenient for you. Um, so now if you work out your tuition by an annual cost and you, you go through the program at the full uh, two years, your approximate cost uh, works out to be, let's see, it's 27900 uh, by two. And my qu and quick math isn't working too well, so let me see quickly what that is. That's 13950 for you plus the cost of your books. And if you chose to pursue the Stafford loan financing through the financial aid office, that it's a, it's a federal loan. Many of you may be familiar from your undergraduate studies or your master's studies if you've done another program. Uh, that would, your entire Stafford loan would cover the amount for your entire tuition. So you actually could get that covered with the Stafford loan per year and not have any money, um, any kind of financial costs out of pocket for you. And these are relatively low interest, uh, currently hovering around 6.5%, I believe, for the graduate Stafford loan. And you have pretty flexible payment terms over a 15 to 20 year period, depending on what you feel comfortable with. And you have some career options with elevated payments as you get established in your career and things. So you're welcome to do that. Um, Wes, there was a question, Does, do the students have to buy a headset to complete the online courses uh, for no, a laptop? No, they do not. You can um, complete the courses from a desktop computer or from a laptop. Um, we will provide all spec details, but you do not need to buy specialized equipment. You do not need to buy a webcam or um, headset. The courses, while they're interactive, are asynchronous. There's no meeting time, so you don't have to be there at a certain day and time to speak with other folks. Um, much of the communication and discussion is handled through uh, our learning management system, which is Blackboard, which allows um, chat and some other kinds of interactive communication, but it does not require any of those uh, additional um, technologies. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the um, one of the students requested it, it was. Can we provide this uh, PowerPoint via PDF? We could email out to the students that are on the line, Wes. I believe we could do that. I, I'll have to check on uh, making it into a PDF. I'm sure I can do it. Um, <laughs> we'll also. I believe Marcus. We're also going to archive this, uh, mm -hmm. and so we can maybe provide them with um, a link to that. Sure, yeah, I, c I can create the PDF on this end, and, and this will okay. actually be a video in Windows Media format, so we will make this available on the web so we can email out to all of you. Um, now, there's a question about offering Pell Grants for this program. Unfortunately, we don't offer Pell Grants. Um, the Pell Grants are largely for undergraduate students, and in the graduate side of things, um, you'll find in most graduate schools, whether you're studying traditionally on the campus or online, um, grant opportunities are uh, very hard to come by on the graduate side. So unfortunately, there are no Pell Grants or other grants available. That certainly does not prohibit you from going and searching out other scholarship opportunities on your own. And there are websites like fastweb.com and scholarships.com that have a lot of scholarship opportunities that particularly graduate students miss out on because they aren't aware that graduate scholarships exist. So that's certainly an opportunity for you to consider. Um, there is a question about how much do books generally cost. I mean, in my experience on the graduate side, generally 100 to 150 maybe per course. I don't know, if, Wes, if you have any. And that's, that's just for traditionally going through the bookstore. You can certainly find it less if you go on to half.com or Amazon and things. And our website will have the exact book and the edition and what author that you should, provide, that you should purchase uh, for your class. So, Wes, I don't know if you have any additional insights on that. Um, I think you're, you're pretty right on target. Uh, occasionally, uh, depending on the type of class, there will be uh, 
either slightly less expensive or a slightly more expensive option, but they all range pretty much within that, you know, um, what I've seen is actually more like 80 to 150. Um, the, almost all the, all the books that we're using um, are used extensively in the courses. They're not wasted money. Uh, they will be essential to the course, so you'll get your money's worth out of it. Um, as well, while they're, they're recent additions, we're um, trying to keep in mind cost to student when selecting texts for the courses. And so most of our faculty are really good about understanding the, the financial uh, situation that the students face and purposely do not pad on extra books um, uh, and, and that kind of thing so that we can minimize and make a, a reasonable cost to attendance for students. Um, I do encourage you to search out all your options for purchasing textbooks, including used and rental books. Uh, many of the books that we will use are widely used and widely available, um, so you should have no problem finding additions. There will be links um, from the registration page to the bookstore uh, so that you can directly purchase the book after registering for a class uh, if you so choose to. And again, a lot of the students on campus have been choosing the rental option from the bookstores because it's uh, substantially less expensive. Okay, great. Uh, we have a great question about the um, financial aid on the FAFSA. The FAFSA, um, for fortunately for graduate students, you can complete the FAFSA really at any time. So it's by no means late to be considered for federal Stafford loans and complete the FAFSA at this point. So. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the FAFSA, it's the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and that has to be completed and submitted to us if you're interested in getting a Stafford loan. Um, you should do that as soon as possible, so uh, we generally encourage students to complete that as you apply, so, so even as you're applying to our program, make sure you're filling out the FAFSA and have it sent directly to the University of New Haven. You'll see there's a code list at the end of the FAFSA, um, but our code is 001. 397. So um, we can certainly provide that. It's all on our website. Um, but if you go on to the FAFSA, complete that. You don't have to include any parent information if you're still living at home. Um, it, you, any graduate students are treated as adults. So if you're a younger professional, you don't need to include any other family expenses. Um, and you will qualify for that 20500 annual federal student loan through the Stafford program if you're interested in taking that. And certainly, we don't encourage students to take more than they need. But anything that you might um, foresee in terms of your tuition and your books and any related costs, you could certainly take a loan for that. Even if you needed to purchase a computer, uh, the Stafford loans can be used as long as they're related to your educational expenses. You may take loans to do that. So you can take as much or as little of that $20,500 um, that you want each year. But all of our students, that's not money that dries up. It's a federal loan. So you can apply for it at any time, um, and even if it comes in after the term starts, we can retroactively apply your aid. We just need to make sure we notify our bursar's office that you are applying for aid and are expecting a loan to be coming in. So it's a very affordable way uh, to do your program if you're interested in doing that. And just like I said, it's not too late to complete any of that paperwork, and it can be completed fully online. Just keep in mind that you will have to apply for a federal PIN. If you've never done the FAFSA before, um, you can go to pin.ed.gov, G-O-V, and that's the PIN website, and you can apply for a federal PIN. And what that does is just verify your identity and allows you to securely uh, sign your uh, FAFSA online so you don't have to fill out any paperwork and, and hand sign it and fax it or mail it into the federal government. So. Um, so the PIN will take a couple of days to take care of first, and then you can complete your FAFSA. Uh, Wes, there was a question. Uh, will we accept any transfer credit? We accept up to six credits uh, of transfer from accredited uh, institutions, depending on the coursework that it entails, if it matches up. Um, we have to evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis. So we encourage you, if you have uh, master's level coursework in criminal justice from another institution, uh, that you let us know that uh, as soon as possible during the application process or after the admissions, and we will um, talk with you about the, the parameters of that, probably request some information about the course that you took, uh, and then make a determination as to whether the, the course courses or course that you took uh, at other institutions 
fulfills the requirements of this program. Um, if they do, then uh, up to six credits can be applied towards this degree. All right. So it doesn't look like there are any questions at the moment. If, if there are any further questions, feel free to enter them now. Um, otherwise, Wes, if I could ask you just to switch your uh, screen over to that contact page that you had at the end of your presentation. Yep. Um, that way, anybody that's here, you see that that's our website for the online program. Many of you have already been there, so we're glad that you found us that way. Um, so if you have any questions or if you want to follow up on the presentation, uh, we also have your email addresses, so we'll happily email out the recorded version of this webinar as well as a PDF of the slides. So if you have any further questions on that, you can refer to the session. And you can also reach out to us directly with that phone number that you see on the screen. So. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and thank you, Wes, for your information on the program. And we hope to welcome you all uh, to the program in the fall. So thanks so much for your time, and have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.